So we're going to look at making a uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna. Now this was a uh, request quite recently in the comments of uh, one of my other videos asking if I could do more on the uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi antennas. Now very early on in this channel, probably going back uh, four years ago now, I did do a selection of uh, different uh, antennas for uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I didn't do too many, I think I did a uh, bi-quad and uh, a couple of dipole antennas but um, the uh, guy in the comments asked me if I'd do a uh, cantenna because it's very very difficult to get something to uh, make a uh, cantenna for uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi when it comes to the uh, diameter of the uh, cam that you need so I'm going to split this video up into two parts in this video we're going to make a uh, 5 gigahertz cantenna out of this uh, copper pipe here now this is uh, a length of copper pipe that's uh, 42 millimeters in diameter now that's 42 millimeters at the uh, outside uh, edges here when you measure on the inside it's just uh, slightly under 39 millimeters in diameter so this is going to be almost perfect for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi now for the second video I've looked around the supermarket and uh, these cans here are the closest cans that I can find uh, to work with uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi the diameter on them is a little bit too wide this is getting on for uh, 50 millimeters in diameter but uh, what I thought I'd do is make a second video making one out of these and then what we can do is test uh, you know the two antennas against each other one that's been made a lot more precise with the uh, correct uh, diameter for working at uh, 5 gigahertz and one that is slightly bigger and see if uh, you know whether there is any uh, real difference in the real world and whether you can get away with making one out of uh, something like this that has a slightly bigger diameter and yes sometimes I do walk around the supermarket with a uh, ruler measuring the diameters of cans uh, quite often buying them for their shape rather than uh, their ingredients so here are some measurements then for a uh, cantenna for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi in order for it to uh, work and propagate correctly and you can see here we haven't got much of a window when it comes to size uh, the maximum is uh, 42 millimeters in diameter and uh, the minimum size is 38 millimeters in diameter now these figures are subject to change um, you know as I spend more time looking at this I uh, you know spent quite a few years perfecting the uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna for instance but uh, you can see, clearly see how the diameter of the uh, can does uh, you know depend on where you're going to position your probe just like it does on the 2.4 gigahertz for instance because a 42 millimeter diameter can the uh, probe distance from the uh, back of the can is 27.4 but if you've got a uh, 38 millimeter diameter can it's 39.5 millimeters so you can see there's a big difference there on the uh, distance from the probe to the back of the can when you're comparing it to the uh, small amount of change in the diameter of the can itself so the can tenor that we're going to make are based off these measurements here at the bottom as I said uh, this uh, is just a smidgen on the inside diameters just slightly over 38 millimeters so we're going to go with a 38 millimeters distance for, of the probe from the back reflector 39.5 and the length of the can the total length of the can is 118.4 millimeters now if you don't have any uh, pipe cutters for this kind of diameter which I don't a little tip you can do to uh, make sure you cut it nice and uniformly all the way around the pipe is if you get some masking tape and uh, carefully place that on and uh, wrap it all the way around until you get it lined up exactly with the join on the other side then you know you've got it all nice and uniform around the pipe put a few layers of that in there and then uh, get a uh, cardboard tube a uh, toilet roll tube that just fits quite snugly over the top there and then you know if you uh, line your saw up with the edge of the uh, cardboard tube you're going to get a nice uniform cut all the way around the pipe so now that I've got my copper pipe cut to length I've just gone in there with a file and cleaned up the uh, edges and also cleaned up one edge because we're now going to solder on this uh, piece of uh, copper here to create the back reflector now you could buy some end stops for these on eBay the same diameter as the pipe but the end stops cost more than the pipe itself so I'm just going to use this copper piece of plate here and solder it onto the end 
Now because the copper pipe itself is uh, three millimeters thick and uh, there's quite a lot of copper there my uh, little blowtorch isn't going to cut the mustard I'm going to have to use a, a slightly bigger blowtorch just to get plenty of heat in here so we get a good connection with that copper plate and get all the solder flowing. So I've got it set up on the bench here normally I uh, wouldn't do something like this on this bench but this bench is uh, the best place to film here in the lab so I've got a heat brick on here just to keep the heat away from the uh, bottom of the branch and uh, I've got the tube sat on the uh, copper uh, plate here as you can see and to hold it all down to uh, give it a bit of pressure so we're getting good contact with that copper plate I've just got a house brick on top just to add a little bit of weight so what I'm going to do is heat up the copper pipe first because that's going to take the most to uh, get heated up hopefully a lot of that heat will transfer onto the uh, copper plate and then I'll add the solder around here and hopefully it'll flow all around there and we'll get a good connection I've also put a little bit of flux all the way around here as well so I'm going to start off as I said by uh, building up that heat into the uh, copper pipe So I'll just let that cool down, I'll turn it around and then I'll solder the other side. So this side's now been uh, all soldered up so I'm just letting everything cool down now but you can see this side is a, a much cleaner job than the opposite side. It's uh, true that if you do something uh, you know with a lot of practice it's not something I uh, really do that often but uh, we'll just uh, clean all this up, cut away any excess copper and then uh, clean it all around with the Dremel tool and hopefully it'll be fine. So now that I've finished off uh, tidying up the end cap there, the uh, back reflector of the uh, now antenna, I'm going to drill a hole for the probe. Now my figures here, I've got uh, 38 millimeters. I need to drill a hole for the probe 39.5 millimeters away from this back reflector. Now when you're working with uh, these uh, higher frequencies, your measurements have to be spot on. So make sure when you're measuring this uh, 39.5 millimeters away from the back here you take into account the thickness of the uh, copper that you've used so if you use something that's uh, five millimeters take that into account with your measurements and again if you use something that's one millimeter again take that into uh, consideration and add that onto the 39.5 millimeters now the probe for the five gigahertz antenna wants to be 15 millimeters long and i've measured mine out at just a smidgen over 16 millimeters just to take into account the uh, thickness of the wall of the tube in there so you must take, take that into account when you're measuring off the uh, length of the probe because uh, you know just small small errors at these kind of frequencies you can knock everything off and you can really you know uh, put a uh, nail in the coffin of any performance you'll get out of something like this you really need to take your time and get all your measurements correct it's not quite as forgiving as uh, 2.4 gigahertz and as for the thickness of the probe I've uh, used this uh, two millimeter brass tube in here it just fits nicely onto these uh, bulkhead SMA connectors I've got here uh, you know two millimeters is uh, a good kind of thickness but uh, anywhere between uh, 1.5 and uh, 2.5 millimeters should be fine so now that I'm happy with the length of the probe I've covered it with some heat shrink tubing just to make sure that I don't short it out on the uh, side of the can there but uh, what I would normally do with something like this is solder this connector in place but uh, because it's quite thick here the copper and I have to get a lot of heat into it I'm going to uh, drill holes and use these uh, small screws here to hold the SMA connector in place because uh, the amount of heat I'd have to get in there to flow the solder the probably the heat would spread up here and then desolder the uh, back reflector so it's a lot safer to use these screws and I'm going to drill the holes using a uh, one millimeter drill bit and I'm just going to allow these uh, screws just to self tap themselves into there the copper's soft enough that will uh, do that no problem 
Now drilling holes with something so small like this can be a little bit tricky. I mean, yes, you can mark them off, but uh, you're messing with something so small that uh, one little slip of the drill bit and the holes will not line up. So a little trick that I do when I need to uh, drill holes with something like this is uh, use masking tape just to strap it down uh, the best you can, get it really, really tight. I mean, that's strapped down there, it's not going to move any. And because it's masking tape, you can see where the holes are. So just punch through uh, the masking tape to uh, show the holes a little bit more clearly. And then you can go ahead and drill all four holes using the SMA connector as a jig and then they're all going to line up. So you can see now the SMA connector is fitted and uh, it's little tips like that that will help you out. That uh, is something I come up with over time, over many many times of drilling wonky holes and having my SMA connector a little bit skew with, but uh, with masking tape like that, a little trick like that can uh, save you a lot of time and uh, you know do a much neater job than uh, you would do normally and the screws don't protrude too much in there I don't think that's going to interfere with any of the waves inside the can so what I'm going to do now is uh, get some uh, cork and seal up this end just like I do with my 2.4 gigahertz ones so it's just some cork floor tile that I've used in my uh, 2.4 gigahertz builds. You can buy a pack of these for around a tenner and uh, they'll last you a long time. So what I've got here, I've got some uh, epoxy mixed up and all I do is spread that around just the edge on the inside and then we'll pop it upside down on top of the cork mat and then in a, uh, about 20 minutes or so it should be adhered to the cork mat and then we can shape it around the cantenna. And just pop it upside down on there and I'll put a little bit of a weight on there as well. So the cantenna is uh, basically finished now so I think uh, what I'm going to do is paint it and then I'll show you what I've come up with to uh, be able to mount this to a tripod. So while the paint's uh, drying on the cantenna, I've uh, got this clamp here that I picked up on my uh, from my local DIY store down the uh, plumbing aisle, and it's a clamp that fits the uh, diameter of the pipe that we made the cantenna from. Now, unfortunately, the thread here was a little bit too big for a uh, tripod mount, so I just uh, filled it in with some epoxy, drilled out a small hole, and then tapped that hole, and now it's threaded inside there so we can connect it to a uh, tripod. The second thing I'm going to do is remove all this rubber here, we don't need all this and I'm going to replace it with some uh, heat shrink tube in, it, tube in it, it should lower the profile of this a little bit and also cover up the uh, numbers here which show the uh, diameter of the pipe that this clamp will fit. So here is the finished uh, 5 GHz Wi-Fi antenna then and uh, I'm pretty pleased how it's uh, come out. The uh, bracket here works rather well to uh, add a tripod to. Still plenty of room here to uh, connect a uh, Wi-Fi card up. So let's give this a test then on my uh, Wi-Fi in my home. Normally I can't pick up the 5 GHz signal here in the lab but uh, let's give it a uh, go with the antenna. Now as for the Wi-Fi card that we're going to use with this, I've got this uh, cheap one that I've just picked up off Amazon for uh, around £12. It's a uh, dual band uh, 2.4 and 5.8 GHz adapter. I'm presuming the antenna you get with this will be a 2.4 GHz uh, antenna. I've got a few uh, 5 GHz uh, USB adapters but I don't use them very often. I've uh, put them in a box somewhere and I can't lay my hands on them now uh, at the moment. I have got the uh, Alpha Networks uh, 051 NH version 2 which you have to modify by the way if you want to use it with something like this. The uh, SMA connector on that card is uh, 2.4 GHz only. The uh, 5 GHz uh, part of that adapter is uh, an antenna that's built into the PCB internal in the card. and. Uh, if I lay my hands on it, I'll probably do a video in the future actually, get another one in and show you how to modify that. But we're going to use this one for now. I have given this a little test and uh, it's not too bad at all uh, as a uh, performing uh, USB adapter for around £12. So we'll give it a test with this and see how well the antenna does. 
So here it is on the bench then. I've got it quite high up on the bench just to give it a little bit of a helping hand. Uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi doesn't propagate as well as 2.4 gigahertz. My internal Wi-Fi card uh, on my laptop cannot pick up this signal here in my lab. So let's give it a scan then and see how well it does. So it's certainly uh, picking up my 5 gigahertz signal from my house. Uh, just, uh, you know, a smidgen below 60% uh, uh, signal strength there. So that's not too bad at all. And notice as well, doesn't pick up as many other access points as uh, you would normally pick up here in the lab. So it certainly is tuned to uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And here it is on the graph then. It seems uh, pretty stable around 56-57%. Uh, so you could definitely connect to that and access the internet with uh, this little antenna here. And certainly it's not picking up any other kind of uh, access points. Uh, the access point that it is picking up that's pretty strong is the uh, repeater that I've got here in the lab. So you'd expect that to be a uh, really strong signal. But as for any other access points, there's not a great deal of people around me that do use uh, 5 gigahertz uh, on their Wi-Fi setup. And here it is on uh, Insider. Certainly it's the only uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi hotspot around here anyway. So it certainly did the job then. I uh, cannot pick up that uh, 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi signal here in the lab with my uh, laptop's internal Wi-Fi card. But uh, if I uh, compare this to the uh, 2.4 gigahertz version here, you can definitely get an idea of the size difference between the two frequencies. And as I said when making this, you know, you've really got to be spot on with those measurements because just a small fraction of a millimetre out can make big differences. Uh, it's certainly not as forgiving as uh, the 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm going to do a second video on the 5 gigahertz antenna and I'm going to make a second antenna out of uh, these cans that uh, I found in the supermarket. These are the closest I can get to around the uh, 40 millimeters diameter that you would really want for a uh, antenna for 5 gigahertz. These are almost uh, 55 uh, millimeters in diameter so certainly bigger and I'm going to join two of these together and make a antenna and then we can have a shootout just to compare uh, one that's made more in line with the diameter that you need and one that's a little bit bigger and hopefully the results uh, will show that this one should outperform the bigger one and I'll also test this one on the spectrum analyzer in the next video as well as the one that I make out of these two cans so I hope you found that uh, video interesting and uh, it was just uh, one of the uh, subscribers there that asked if I could make a uh, 5 gigahertz uh, antenna. Never made one before so uh, I popped this one together. I have made some 5 gigahertz uh, antennas previously uh, quite a few years ago now on the channel but uh, this is certainly the first antenna that I've ever made. So any comments or questions drop them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them and if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.